Let me tell you a little secret about anime, alright? Anime sucks. There are no good anime. Everything Japan has produced from 1917 to 2019 has been crap. But in 2019, Japan finally figured out how to make a good show. They looked at their lineup of television and said, Ninjas? Boring. Pirates? Who cares? Who would want to watch a single episode about pirates, let alone a thousand? They said, nah, screw all that noise. Firemen. That's where the money's at. It was then that the single coolest anime in television history was born. Enter Fire Force. I can't believe how hype this show is. This video took twice as long as it should have to make because I kept having to pause the show to gush about it to my roommate. Japan said, how do we make firemen cool? And their answer was boobs, demons, and pile drivers. Oh, but Danny, this just sounds like the anime version of the 2004 drama Rescue Me starring Dennis Leary. I don't want to watch the anime version of the 2004 drama Rescue Me starring Dennis Leary. Well, it's different. Fire Force is without a doubt the most underrated show in anime I have ever come across, and I'm gonna tell you why. So sit back, relax, and let me explain Fire Force. One day in Tokyo, a man riding a train spontaneously explodes and turns into a monster. And if that isn't the coolest opening to a series you've ever seen, I don't know what more I can do for you. That looks like a serious fire. No, it's a sarcastic fire. Real astute observation, doofus. This human jack-o'-lantern is Shinra, and surprisingly, our protagonist. He crouches, readying to face off against the creature. But aw oh, shit, here comes the motherfucking Japanese fire department, baby! I swear this gets cool. Have you ever seen a crew with this much big dick energy? Move it, fucker. They're just like the fire department you know. Uh, if the firefighters showed up to your house, beat the fire to death with their bare hands, and then gangbanged your significant other. This opening sequence is the most badass thing I've ever seen. It's just so immediately cool and leaves you with a million questions you want answered. Why is there a nun? How did this chick stop that fireball? What is this giant pile driver and how do I get one? We're three minutes into the first episode and I already need a Xanax. Shinra notices a woman in trouble and like the absolute A-class gentleman he is, literally blasts off and sweeps her off her feet. Ladies, this is the standard you need to be holding your men to. Rightfully astounded, they ask Shinra who he is, and he explains that he's actually their newest recruit. They take him to Fire Force Company 8 headquarters, where he meets his fire captain, Akitaro, who's absolutely shredded. He also meets Lieutenant Hinoa, who's a nerd that's absolutely shredded. You guys noticing a theme here? Shinra explains that he has a condition that causes him to smile when he feels nervous or tense, and that he joined the Fire Force because he wants to become a hero. A hero, huh? Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's in stark contrast with your nickname. Everybody calls you a devil due to an incident that took place when you were young. Alright, well to be fair, how could you not be called a devil with a face like that? He also meets Iris, who's the company's nun, and Maki, who reminds us who this anime's target audience is. Akitaru rounds up the crew to explain, well, the plot of the show, and it's just as badass as it is terrifying. One day, without cause or warning, people the world over began catching fire. Oh, is that all? If people just started exploding with no explanation in real life, I would promptly quit my position of being alive. I would hand in my two weeks notice, pack up my things, and then cease living. And I'm like the manager of being alive. They, and those like them who've come since, are called infernals. Having lost all sense of self, they run rampant until they die. He also explains that the only way to put down an infernal is to destroy its core. Which is why we saw them fucking pile drive that one from earlier through the heart. See, Fire Force soldiers are different from actual firefighters. While firefighters put out fires, Fire Force soldiers... kill them. The Fire Force's mission is to figure out what causes spontaneous human combustion, and ideally, put a stop to it. Now you may be saying to yourself, well, that explains the monsters, but what about Rocket Boy? Well, while this phenomenon turned some people into infernals, others were given pyrokinetic abilities. 
In fact, there are two types of pyrokinetics, second generation and third generation. Second generation pyrokinetics, like Maki, are able to manipulate existing fire but can't create their own, while third gens, like Shinra, can create fire but can't manipulate others. Shinra is sent on his first mission and immediately gets his ass knocked into a flashback by an infernal. We learn that when he was a child, an infernal somehow made its way into his house and burned it to the ground, killing both his mother and his little brother. When people saw Shinra standing among the ashes, wide, nervous grins spread across his face, they assumed he was the one who started the fire and the nickname Devil quickly spread. Shinra eventually comes to and sees that his squad has cornered the Infernal. Everyone, prepare for battle! What the fuck, this guy brought a submachine gun? Did any of you bring water? No, just two people with the ability to create fire and a guy with a gun? The squad creates an opening for Shinra and young Iron Man ignites his thrusters. Black smoke is the soul's release. Ashes thou wert and art. May thy soul return. God damn, this show is cool. Shinra blasts through the air and kicks a hole right through the Infernal's heart. Sister is... Is my wife? What, you mean that broad I kicked a hole through? Oh yeah, she's fucked. Totally fucked. That's what you were asking me, right? If she was fucked? Back at the station, Akitaru tells Shinra that he'll be competing at the Rookie Fire Soldier Games, which is an event where all of the new Fire Force rookies get to show off their skills. He also explains that another new recruit named Arthur is joining their company. And I fucking hate Arthur. Oh, the devil. Hoped I'd never see you again, you damn knight. And apparently, so does Shinra. Arthur decided to start role-playing as a knight when he was a kid and, like, never grew out of it. Which would be fine, but he's, like, genuinely delusional. Come on, man. You heard her call him lieutenant, right? We all stand as equals before the round table. He needn't bow. God, shut up! Look, Shinra's whole shtick is that he wants to be a hero, which I get is similar to Arthur's, but at least Shinra has, like, I don't know, a mild grasp on reality? Like, Arthur's literally living in his own little world. Met him at the academy. I told him that knights have jack on heroes, so midway through training, he tacked King onto that made-up title of his. What a loser, right? What? Don't look at me! This doesn't work if you start giving me commentary! The lieutenant wants to test out the cadet's abilities and tells Maki to take them on. Go take them both on, Maki. Wait, do you mean me? Do you see anyone else on this rooftop who might go by your name? Okay, let's all take it easy here, huh? It won't be an issue for her. Maki started out in the military. She understands what it takes to destroy a man. Okay, Jesus, what the fuck does that mean? The first thing you'll notice about Maki is that she's fucking ginormous. This chick's got the body composition of a silverback gorilla and the intelligence of a fruit roll-up. Arthur uses his abilities to ignite a plasma sword, which he calls Excalibur, because fuck this guy, and Maki beats him at his own roleplay. It looks like chivalry's dead after all. A true knight ought to kneel when he speaks to a princess. Mommy, I mean Maki, absolutely trounces the cadets by controlling their fire. After, Shinra sent on his second mission, and the tone of the rest of the episode absolutely plummets. The captain tells the cadets to make sure their weapons aren't seen by civilians. The two dunces immediately break this rule and the captain takes them aside to teach them a harsh reality about the Fire Force. You see, civilians like to think that the Fire Force is a group of experts peacefully putting their loved one's souls to rest. Many see it as a religious act of mercy, which is why Fire Force squads include a priest. All infernals were once human. We can say we're putting them to rest, but in truth, we kill them. Civilians want to see a priest cleanse the sight of a victim, of a loved one, not the crazy gun axe they use to kill him. Wake up call received, the squad gears up and gets ready to kick some- Infernal located. Oh, fuck me. This scene is outstanding, and the moment I truly fell in love with this show. The Infernal's just sitting there, motionless. It hasn't harmed anyone, it hasn't caused any damage. It's just sitting at the table, holding on to some human behavior it once knew. Iris says a prayer, and Arthur calmly, mercifully, puts the creature down. 
I love that this show puts Infernals in a sympathetic light like this. It would have been so easy to keep them as mindless action fodder, but this show goes the extra mile and really explores the full potential of its premise. It makes this world feel so much more grounded, this phenomenon so much more tragic. And I love that Shinra isn't just trained in how to fight, he's trained in how to behave in front of civilians, how to handle the emotional toll that comes with taking a life. Afterwards, Shinra and Arthur even bond over how upsetting the whole event was. It's just so... so... boring. Where's all the action at? Well, just then, the building fills with black ashes that begin exploding and taking the house down. The attack was caused by this Las Vegas magician with the sloppiest irises I've ever seen, but he escapes before the fire force can apprehend him. The next day, the fire companies are getting ready for the rookie fire soldier games when Shinra sees the fire soldier that helped him the day his family died. He tries to talk to him about the incident, but accidentally ends up sexually assaulting a girl instead. Twice. God, don't you just don't you just hate when that happens? Yeah, it's uh it's one of those kinds of shonen. The games begin and they're tasked with entering a simulated fire scene. Their mission is to rescue anyone inside and be the first to reach the crewman dressed as an infernal. So that's it. We stormed the castle. Uh I, I guess. Too bad for the rest of these clowns. I can fly my way straight to the top! Oh Shinra said suck my ash, clowns! Shinra makes it to the top and finds that Michael Jackson going through his goth phase has invaded the competition. God, this guy looks like he smells like the inside of a gas station. The man, named Joker, tells Shinra that he has information about his mother's death. He explains that Shinra's brother is actually alive and that the Fire Force have been keeping secrets about the tragic event. Then Joker gives him a choice. Either stay with the fire dorks and die, or become a cool guy and learn all the secrets of his mother's murder. But Shinra says fuck that! Do I look like I'd ever join the cool guys? A flying kick is the mark of a true hero! <laughs> I mean, I mean, I guess. I guess I can't prove a flying kick isn't the mark of a true hero. Like I said, Shinra isn't really cool guy material. Arthur and Shinra's victim make it into the building and interrupt Joker's little one-on-one. -on -one. Go report to the captains outside! Oh yeah? <laughs> uh... Yeah. Side note, there are so many long, awkward pauses in this show, just... So I'd bring it up. Joker's done playing around, so he empties all of his black powder and blows the building to ashes. But thankfully, Shinra's fast enough to get everyone to safety. My cuts were too perfectly executed to bring the ceiling down. God, fuck this guy. Good, fuck this guy! After, faith in his organization shaken, Shinra asks his captain if the Fire Force has any ulterior motives. The captain tells him that while all eight companies of the Fire Force are sworn to discover the truth behind spontaneous human combustion, the companies all consider each other rivals, often withholding crucial information from each other and acting with their own mysterious interests. Some companies act with religious motivations, others with financial ones, etc. The captain tells Shinra that his own personal mission is to investigate the other companies, as he believes one of them must have discovered the truth behind Infernals by now and is keeping it a secret from the others. Shinra, being the goody fire shoes that he is, swears that he'll aid the captain in his investigation in any way that he can. Speaking of the other Fire Force companies, the next day a firefighter is on trial for murdering several people. The man is found not guilty due to mental instability and then bursts into flames. Hey guys, we wanna... do something about this? Anybody got a glass of water or something? No? Alright. He turns into an infernal, only instead of becoming a mindless thrall, this guy somehow maintains his intelligence. Which apparently has never happened before. Squad 8 sets off to intercept the infernal, and Jesus Christ, could you let them in the van? They've gotta be breaking some kind of public indecency laws right now. You can't just ride a man down the street, Arthur! Okay, there are laws! Shinra and Arthur make it to the Infernal, and the guy's like, absolutely flabbergasted. What the hell's your- What the hell? What the hell's your problem, you crazy punks? The rest of Squad 8 shows up, and Hinoa reminds me of why he's my favorite character. So you can't kill me, it's against the law, right? <laughs> Bitch, do I look like the law? If you guys get to go around killing Infernals, then I'm gonna go around killing humans! 
This isn't good. Dude, well, nice going, idiot. Where'd you get that gun? The big doofus convention? The Infernal escapes, and the Squad 8 commanders tell Shinra to go put it down like the dog it is. Shinra takes issue with how callous his commanders are towards a still sentient being, but decides to follow their orders anyway. Shinra catches up to the Infernal, and it tells him that since it saved so many lives as a fireman, it should be entitled to killing just as many. Even though this is a pretty over-the-top and blatantly evil motivation, I do love how it connects to the show's themes of what it means to be a hero. Do heroes have the right to behave however they want just because they're saving lives? Do the lives you save absolve you from the sins you commit? And if we connect this with the lesson Shinra learned on his second mission, we get a pretty deep deconstruction of the concept of being a hero. It isn't enough to just handle a situation and then call it a day. A hero has to make sure civilians affected by the situation are cared for. That collateral and emotional damage are kept to a minimum. That infernal taught Shinra that heroes have to act responsibly while on missions, but this Infernal teaches him that heroes have to act responsibly when not on missions as well. Shinra has superpowers, authority, knowledge the public doesn't have, and it's easy for someone like that to develop a superiority complex. It's just another example of this show making something deeper of its fireman theme in a way that I find pretty impressive. Anyway, Shinra is about to execute the Infernal when the heavens split, and a sweet, beautiful creature birthed from my dreams graces us with her cleavage. I mean, presence. Goth Katara over here is Princess Hibana, the captain of Special Fire Force Company 5. And I love her. She looks like she got her dress from an 18th century pirate ship and her sweatshirt from Hot Topic. I didn't know Emo Spice Trader was my type, but it absolutely is. She restrains the Infernal and tells Shinra that her company will take it from here. You pathetic lump of 8th Company gravel. Don't you know that your place is on the ground beneath my feet? Yes, ma'am. Now lick my shoe. Yes, ma'am! Shinra finds himself surrounded by women, but thankfully knows that breakdancing is a quick way to get girls to stop wanting to touch you. Company 8 shows up, and after a lot of arguing and tension, eventually agrees to let Company 5 take the Infernal as long as they promise to share any data they collect from it. But who knows how long that promise will last. I love everything about Fire Force. It's bombastic and wild, but isn't afraid to be quiet and contemplative. It's oozing with style, and the animation and color palette is some of my favorite in all of anime. The premise is one of the coolest things I've ever seen, and every episode is better than the last. I honestly don't know why more people aren't talking about this show, and the only thing I can think of is that a lot of people are put off by the fireman theme. And honestly, it'd probably throw me off too if they didn't run with it so well. It doesn't feel like they just slapped a fireman's skin on a generic shonen anime. The world feels thought out and the themes are all interconnected within its premise. This is a show deconstructing what it means to save lives. What it means to be a hero. I know I'm early into this series, but if the quality stays this good, I honestly think it should be considered alongside this genre's greats. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss any future Let Me Explains. Let me know in the comments what other shows you'd like to see me cover, and if you want to help support the channel while also getting exclusive content not found anywhere else, make sure you consider subscribing to my Patreon. There you'll get access to my Food Wars reaction series as well as access to my private Discord server. And I will see you guys next time. But now I always seem to freeze the things I